while you might be getting ready to retire, new headlines may have you concerned about cash flow. Social Security is not getting enough money, and in as little as 11 years, it won't be able to pay benefits. Today's workers are paying for those who receive benefits, but people are living longer and having fewer kids. That means fewer people are paying into Social Security. Back in 1960, there were 5.1 workers per beneficiary, but today that ratio has dropped by nearly half. And in 2035, it could get even lower. I'm joined now by Paul Mueller. He's an economist with the American Institute for Economic Research. Paul, welcome to the show. So help us understand, because right now, 71 million people receive Social Security. So how great is the risk of benefits running out? Well, Social Security in its current form is unsustainable. And it, it's a program that has always, in a, in a sense, been unsustainable because, as you mentioned, it's set up where current uh, taxpayers are funding current retirees. So even though it's called a savings program or retirement program, it's actually current workers paying for future retirees. It was set up that way from the beginning. And as you noted, the number of people paying into it uh, per retiree has declined as people are living longer and families are getting smaller. Uh, if you go back to the founding of the program, it was over 10 workers per retiree. So it's only gotten worse. 2024, interestingly enough, will be a record-breaking year for retirement in the U.S. Around 4.1 million Americans are expected to turn 65 this year and actually every year through 2027. So what does that mean for their Social Security? Well, it means that we're going to have to make changes to the program. And I think, you know, politically, it's, you know, we refer to it as the third rail. Nobody wants to touch it. No one wants to be seen as, as cutting Social Security. There were those famous commercials when Paul Ryan tried to, and they talked about throwing grandma off a cliff. But the program needs to be reformed. And the sooner we reform it, the less painful it will be. And there's a lot of ways to do that. I think people are worried that uh, if you if you modify Social Security programs, somehow they're going to lose a lot of benefits. But there are many ways to phase in reforms over time to, to raise retirement age in the future so people can prepare for it, uh, to offer people incentives to, to start retiring maybe a little bit later or uh, at a different payout. Uh, but if we wait until 2035 or the, the year when it runs out, then the cuts will happen automatically across the board. It'll affect everyone. And so... It, senior citizens more than anyone should be pushing to reform Social Security rather than pushing to leave it alone. OK, talk about that a little bit, because we are in election year and a lot of officials are pushing Congress saying you need to do something. But because we are in an election year, it's likely it won't. So what risk does that put Social Security at? Well, again, the, the longer we wait, the worse things will get. And uh, it, it's the sort of thing where a lot is possible. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. The but taxes are not going to be a great way. So another thing that a lot of people don't know about the history of the Social Security program is that when it was first created, people were paying less than 5% in their payroll taxes between employees and employer. That number is now over 13%. So over the last 70 to 80 years, over time, Congress has raised the tax rate and raised the tax rate so that it's one of the, the highest taxes that most workers pay. And again, this is just not a, a winning solution. It's not a winning strategy here. So what Congress needs to focus on is how they can make structural changes that will balance this program between the, the, the decreasing number of, of people paying into it and uh, the people who still depend on it and are planning on receiving it in the future. And so it'll be a combination of probably raising the age. There might be a little bit more borrowing to, to fill a stopgap. But uh, if they don't address it this year, the best time to address it is next year. OK, in the final 30 seconds here, help our viewers cut through some of the noise because we have obviously an election year. President Biden is saying he wants to use taxes uh, to help it. And President Trump is saying that he's open to reforms. So what should viewers be listening to when they're deciding how to push for, for this? Yeah, I think they should be listening to not just what the, the candidate says about um, Social Security, and certainly an openness to changing it would, would be helpful. If you're not open to changing it, you probably won't. Uh, but the other thing they should take keep in mind, too, is that politicians tend to promise us everything, right? They promise that they're not going to raise taxes, they're going to increase benefits, not going to cut anything. But as most people know, this country has a lot of problems, and, and government spending, runaway government spending and government borrowing is one of them. And uh, 
that's something they should look for. How is this going to be paid for? How is a candidate going to manage the, the overall federal budget? All right. Paul Mueller, appreciate your expertise. Good to see you.